O M G. I got the limited edition Arashik album. I am so, so just ecstatic. I'm so happy. Oh my goodness. I, I, I didn't really think that I would be able to find a limited edition album that was um, older than 2007. So this is just amazing to me. <sighs> In other news, Last week I got sick again. I swear this is not my year. I think the uh, what I heard was the Chinese believe that if it, it is your year, then you will have an incredibly unlucky year. And so far, I think I'm gonna believe them because I never get sick and this year has just been a sick year. I've been so sick all year. Anyways, so we'll get right to the news. There's really actually not a whole lot, but first of all, I would have talked about this in the video last week, but uh, obviously that didn't happen, but Sho and Ono made a guest appearance on 24-hour television, which um, is an every year telethon. Han Jenny 8 was the host for this year, which is pretty exciting. Ono and Sho did um, two different segments with two different, you know, people. Sho did a segment with a child with a disability, and Ono... <laughs> Ono made his appearance as Kaibutsukun, of course, which is awesome. So if you guys haven't checked them out, they're both really, really sweet and um, it's a, a great thing to watch, I think. They just do such a great job with the children and everything, you know, it's, it's, it's really wonderful to see, uh, in my opinion. The other news that I have is pretty exciting. Um, I know that I did mention earlier that there was a rumor about Sho's Butler drama, and it has been officially confirmed, officially, officially, finally, um, it's been reported in uh, the major Japanese newspapers and etc. So that's really exciting. The show is going to be called Nazotoki wa Dina no Atode, which basically means mystery solving comes after dinner. And like I said before, Sho does play a butler, and he's supposedly a sarcastic, witty butler, um, which a lot of people have said, you know, the butler role kind of more, it, it does fit Sho, but the, the sarcastic and snarky part, not really, it should be more Nino, obviously. But, you know, I don't know, I, I'm pretty excited, I, I want to see show pull this off and see what's what it's gonna be like i don't know a whole lot of the details i just know it's gonna be in next season and um you know since arashi hasn't really been coming out with a lot of singles this year which actually <laughs> i'm really quite happy about i don't know about you guys but i'm just really glad that they're able to have a break from something but with that said, the fact that they really haven't come out with anything recently, it makes me think that they're probably going to be doing the theme song for um, the new drama. So that's something that I'm really looking forward to. I'm just waiting for them to announce a new single, so let's hope. The top question of the week comes from username Vinny561 who asked, The first time you went to Japan, did you go alone or with somebody else? What was your favorite part of Japan? and how long did you stay? The first time that I went to Japan, I was alone, um, and it was actually the first time that I'd ever traveled to a different country, so it was a little, you know, different for me. I'd never flown by myself before, I'd never been to another country before, and I'd never lived else somewhere else um, outside of the country, so it was definitely um, a a new experience for me. I stayed in Okazaki, Japan, which is in Aichiken, which is kind of the central area of the main island. It's near Nagoya, if you're looking on a map. Nagoya is one of the three major cities in the, on the main island. I stayed there for um, a little bit over three months and it was, it was an amazing, amazing experience. I went there to continue my Japanese studies and kind of to further um, my, my language skills and also to travel. So I did a lot of traveling while I was there as well. As for my favorite 
place in Japan. It's kind of hard to say. I mean, I have a really, I'm kind of fond of Nagoya just because that's kind of, that's, that's where I always went on the weekends, you know, I would go there because that's where the fun was. So I, I do have a big soft spot for Nagoya. However, um, I did travel, like I said, a lot and, you know, I really enjoyed Ise. We went and we swam in the ocean over there and it was wonderful. That was a great time. We also saw Ise shrines, of course, which was beautiful. But you know, I'd have to say the most memorable part of the whole traveling around in Japan for me was Nara because they have the big Buddha there. Um, it's gigantic and it's absolutely amazing to go see and also at that same place is where they have all of the emperor's uh, deer and the deer are so sacred that you know nobody's allowed to do anything to the deer so the deer are so used to being around people that you can just walk up to them they walk up to you nuzzle your leg it's it's adorable and when I went it was right around the time that a lot of the new fawns were being born and so there were so many little baby fawns running around it was the most it was just absolutely <laughs> adorable it really was and of course I have fond memories of Kokoritsu as well in Tokyo that's where I went to see the concert first concert at Kokoritsu for 5x10 so that's some fond memories as well but I guess if I'm gonna say it travel my favorite travel place that's definitely Nara and I really enjoyed Nagoya to live in and enjoy so you know it was great I like Tokyo it's a little bit too crowded for my tastes but I, I do like Tokyo a lot. There's so much to do and there's so much going on all the time there. It's so hard to choose, you know? There's so many great places. I think every place has, you know, its own interesting point and part about it that kind of leaves an impression in your heart. If you guys have ever been to Japan, leave a video response or comment of your favorite places of Japan and why. Okay, so that's it for this week. Yay! I'm so excited! Bye-bye!